Council of Township or Tor Ooh, I got ahead of myself, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Okay. A yeah, I, I'm just too keen sometimes. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Jarvis, seconded by Councillor Hazelton. Be it resolved that Council of the Township of Georgian Bay rise from closed session at 11.24 a.m. to report legal advice received regarding 109 Ravine Way appeal. All those in favor? And that is carried. So next on our agenda, Councilor Rianco, under new business, you wanted to lead a, de a brief discussion, you said. Well, it may be semantics, but um, it has bothered me over the last, well, many years. When we uh, have these uh, public meetings um, uh, under the planning uh, council, we have these couple of different public meetings where either the clerk or the planning staff or consultants bring reports uh, uh, for public comment. Quite often those reports within them, either down near the bottom under, under comments or dis discussion or whatever, there's some kind of a recommendation uh, that uh, uh, the authors are, are recommending approval of the application. And to me, that is kind of having the, the cart ahead of the horse because really, uh, how can we make a recommendation when we haven't heard from the public or we haven't heard from council? And so it's kind of hard to change a recommendation where you say, okay, well, before the public meeting, we recommended uh, approval and that is not going to really change when the final report comes out, no matter what the public says. So it kind of sets us up already. If council disagrees with uh, uh, the, the recommendation, then pretty well we're already set up for an OLT uh, uh, hearing because the town just approved, you know, recommending it. So I'm just wondering, do we really need to have a recommendation uh, on these applications uh, prior to uh, hearing from the public or uh, or council, um, that's my that's my position. I'm just wondering if we can have a little discussion on that. I don't know whether Ms. people would. would... Ms. Bouguet, did you want to comment now that you or are you just appearing to be to appear to be part of the discussion? <laughs> Through your worship, I am appearing to listen, uh, but I would I have a few words. Um, after the discussion on on this matter. Okay. Councillor Cooper, followed by Councillor Bocek. Thank you, Mayor Kutzier, and uh, thank you, Councillor Rianco, for raising this matter. Um, I am very concerned about very much the same thing, and, and uh, I think you've uh, brought this forward. We've talked about this a few times in the last year or so, briefly. Uh, but I, th I think there's some other information that we need to remember or get to, and that is that uh, if you look at the results at OLT, we've had very little success at OLT if Council or the Committee of Adjustment has gone against the recommendation. Um, and that's been pretty consistent. That's the first point. The second point is that uh, if you look at the last 10, 15 years of OLT, we had a period, um, I think around 2012 to 2014 or something like that, somewhere in that neighborhood where we gave direction to staff that uh, there were not to be any more recommendations. Um, and council did at the time, I was not on council, you probably were. Um, and uh, the, the what happened was it's quite clear um, when we stopped uh, the recommendations, our OLT appeals went right down. Um, and then two years later, we snapped back to making recommendations and the OLT appeals went through the roof again. So um, it's a very costly process that is, and, and we've been setting uh, on a per capita basis, on a dwelling basis, records. Uh, in terms of the number of OLT appeals that we have in this township. And one of the ways to get around that appears from uh, historical information that it makes some sense uh, 
to not have recommendations and and let uh, uh, the public speak, let the council speak, and and then come to a conclusion and decision. So, those are my thoughts on it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bocha. Yeah, we have talked about this before and we made a little bit of headway with it and then um, things have seemed to revert it back. Now, I don't know what the Planning Act says about um, bringing a report forward where you either oppose or, or you support the application. But one thing I do know is that when our planning department brings forward an application and shows their support for it, if council doesn't agree or there's information to the contrary, that triggers, we have to go outside the township and pay for a planner and pay for a lawyer because we can't use our own because they've already given their opinion on the, um, on the documents brought to council. So I would ask um, our planning department to see if maybe the um, recommendation or, or the support of the application or, 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 or refusal uh, could wait until after the public process and after council's comments. Um, and then there could be another step where the planning department approves it. But that all is based on planning law. My concern is the dollars we spend on planners and lawyers at the uh, tribu tribunals because we can't use our own because of a statement that was made. Thank you. I, I, I'm finding myself in two camps here, but I think I, I, I want to make a distinction, at least in, in, in my initial thoughts. One is when we're doing a public meeting where we're encouraging public input, it's not uncommon for us to defer that decision based on input received. And I think that if, if the planning staff made a recommendation of approval, and then based on all the input received, I think that definitely gives planning staff an option to change their recommendation when they come back with their subsequent re report. Um, and I, I, I guess I, I find myself torn because on the one hand, I want to know what the professional planners think of the application. I want them to do their analysis of how it fits in or doesn't fit into the zoning bylaw or the official plan and the district plans and the, and the provincial regulations and all that stuff. I, I want our, our planning staff to present those arguments. And I find myself wondering if they present their arguments, which they say, well, we believe that it meets this condition or that part because of section this and or bylaw that, even if they don't say in the very last sentence, therefore we recommend approval, if during the body of the report, they say, in their opinion, this is all good, it's almost, I don't wanna call it redundant. Uh, I'd rather call it, it's, it's convenient that they, they come to a conclusion for us. Um, but, and I think that it behooves us as council that if we disagree with their decision to come up with good arguments, um, but at the same time, I, I, I fully acknowledge the extra challenge we have when council has um, a different opinion. And I, I find myself wanting, whenever council responds differently than what the professional staff would recommend, that I think we should automatically, and I don't, we don't do it now, it's the best, minimum, I think we should automatically get from uh, our staff a recommendation as to what we need to change in our bylaws if we don't want them recommending uh, the item that they recommended approval and we disagreed and they might just say well our, our, our bylaws are not clear on the fact that you know three-story cottages are unacceptable I'm making one up as I go along here but you know, it, it's because I think sometimes we tend to suggest that planning staff doesn't get what we want to do, but planning staff are stuck with the bylaws we've given them. And I think what we need more is it, when we disagree or see things differently, 
we need the recommendations. Okay, what, what is the hole in our bylaws that need to be plugged? Anyway, just some of my thoughts. Councilor Wienko. And I, I understand what you're saying, but really what it comes down to is usually one sentence at the bottom of, of the report, and it could be under uh, discussion or comments or whatever. It's usually just one sentence, and usually the very last sentence that I'm suggesting be uh, left off until the final report comes. Obviously, when the final report comes, we want to know what, where, the, where the planning staff or the clerk or whatever stand on the issue. But um, I'm just suggesting maybe that one sentence be left off. The report can be as positive, they, you know, as positive as as uh, uh, they want to be. And I think by reading the report itself, you kind of know where they stand. And so I'm just suggesting that maybe that one one sentence be left out with the recommendation because there may be something that the public comes up with, or there may be something that council comes up with the planning staff hadn't thought about, and. Then they then they can change their mind uh, easier. But once they make a suggestion, I've never seen a report come back where they've actually changed their mind. You know, my memory may be a little lacking, but I can't re I can't recall something that's ever come back to us in the in the council. I mean, the planning department has changed their mind based on a previous recommendation. So I'm just suggesting that one sentence be left out, and uh, uh, the planning can planning can say whatever they want in the report, we'll understand where they're going, but the final the finals decision is not made till we get the final report. Hmm. Hmm. Councilor Jarvis. Yeah, I'm finding myself in agreement with statements made by uh, Councilor Rianco and Cooper on this and uh, an agreement and not because of anything the planning department is or isn't doing, but more because of the way the OLT seems to operate. And we've already stated clearly that we would prefer not to have to deal with an OLT at all. Um, so I think we all have clear views on what we think of the OLT. So I think in a, in a manner of exactly as Councilor Bianco stated, let's not give the OLT any ammunition. Let's leave it uh, without the statement. I think right now, from what I'm seeing through our planning department, there's enough screening going on in the pre- uh, the pre-planning process, I think a lot of people that we might have seen in the past coming forward with applications, we're not seeing, which is, is a, which is a good thing. But having said that, the OLT is still a bit of a, 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 an issue for us. And I think that if we provide less ammunition for them to work with, the better off we will all be. And so in that way, I, I agree with the Paul Bianco's, uh, Councilor Bianco's statements there about that, that, that one line. Thank you, Councillor Hazelton. I'm just going to pile on and uh, agree that uh, we have a problem here. You've probably heard me talk about it before, so I'll just be brief here. Um, no recommendations uh, prior to the final uh, review. And um, I think we should uh, implement a post mortem whenever we have a planning department recommendation and a council or committee of adjustment denial where that postmortem digs into immediately where the gaps were. And this is essentially what you, Mayor, were, were talking about. Why, what is it that planning needs to see things differently or conclude things differently to align with council and committee of adjustment uh, decisions? Uh, so that gap has to be closed uh, we've been talking about it for a while, but I think we need a policy or procedure in place to do a post-mortem every time there is the gap. And that gap will either uh, help planning see things differently, or it will help council see things differently. Somebody has to see things differently. I don't know what the right answer is, but if we don't get into that post-mortem, we'll never know. Thank you. Ms. Boutier, you want to, oh, I see Councillor Cooper. And then we'll go to Ms. Boutier. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, cover off a couple of other things partly related to the statement I made initially, and that is um, I am looking at the OLT record, and I, I think it's pretty clear. Uh, we went through a long period up to 2014 
uh, where we had anywhere from four to uh, six OLT uh, hearings every year. But interestingly, it dropped off in 2015, only two, 2016, one, 2017, one. It was the same period that we stopped making recommendations. Now, if we go past 17 into 2018, four OLT, 2019, four OLT, 2020, eight OLT. So all I'm trying to say here is that <laughs> the record speaks for itself. And, and uh, yes, we may have some issues with uh, the wordings of our bylaws, but it's, I, I have to say from some of the things that I've experienced over the last seven and a half years and, and studying it prior to that, there were attempts to um, say that our bylaws weren't strong enough. And uh, that may be true occasionally, but uh, often it was an excuse. It was a red herring. It was an attempt to allow applicants to go ahead. Uh, was the way I saw what was going on. So that is most uh, concerning. One of the things that happened, by the way, in that period where it was very low, not only were recommendations re removed, but I think the verbiage that I remember from the time was uh, council or the committee of adjustment. I think this applies to both council and the committee of adjustment, by the way. Uh, the verbiage was uh, something along the lines you you, your, your, this body can either approve or deny or defer. And those were the ver words that were used and no recommendation. It's up to you, this body, to make that decision. And I think that applies not only from an initial report, public meeting, but even the second report. You've got a body that's making a decision, let them make the decision. So those are my other thoughts in terms of uh, around this subject. Thank you. Ms. Puthia. Through your worship, I'm, I'm uh, in the process of crafting a, a motion here. Um, first and foremost, in the future, can you please give a heads up when you're going to bring a new matter forward so that we could prepare this in advance? Um, but I hear you, Council, and I hear uh, what your concerns are. And um, I am just in the midst of, of uh, finishing up this motion to be uh, so that staff could have formal direction based on this conversation. So, well, why don't we see whether Dr. Spilla has anything to say to give you a few more minutes? How's that? Dr. Spilla, you've heard the concerns and the, and the ideas. Your response. Well, thank you, Mayor Kutzier. Uh I do have a few thoughts on this, and I think I think it's really up to what council is really seeking to achieve here. And I guess there's an old saying: you can have things good, fast, or cheap. And um, basically, I've I've heard all of those arguments. Um, I, I think the best way to move forward is to ask administration to come back with a report on this one and uh, and we'll we'll look into it uh, as uh, as our acting CAO said. Uh, it's helpful if we have this information in advance for a, a more a fulsome discussion. Okay. How much more time do you need, Ms. Bukies? Just hopefully we're coming back at meeting at one o'clock anyway. Why don't we wait till then? Well, that that will be our next decision when we're coming back. I think we're ready with a draft. Okay. Please share. Julie, would you like me to put it on the screen? Yes, please. 
And yes, I I, uh, I prefer your therefore, and I just added a last that. Okay. Whereas the planning meeting of March 15, 2022, Council discussed the consequences that public reports have recommendations prior to hearing the public comments. Therefore, be it resolved that Council requests staff to bring forward a report on the options that could be used in lieu of a recommendation, or even that the recommendation be brought forward subsequent to public meetings, and that Council direct staff to draft a re separate report that will propose how staff can track the differences between Council's views of planning policies and changes that would be required to line up intent with the policy. All right, hopefully we won't get into an hour's worth of resolution crafting, but I think this is capturing what we're talking about is that the, at least the, the initial reports will give us options as opposed to uh, recommendation. And I like the idea that uh, uh, I, I think not only staff can track the differences, I, I think that should actually maybe be expanded slightly. Um, um, what did uh, Councillor Hazelton call it a postmortem? Um, I, I think we should we have we should have some report, if I can use that, some report as to where the differences were between the council opinion and the staff opinion. If I could, your mayor, just uh, yeah, you know, immediately schedule a when I say immediately, typically next month, uh, but you know immediately schedule a discussion on this matter. Uh, and we can do it in closed session, open whatever needs to be done, um, because we don't want to lose the uh, the thought processes that were going on while we discussed it. Um, and that's essentially what a postmortem is. It's a, it's an open discussion where you can discuss it. Uh, and I think that um, uh, we also uh, should in, uh, should uh, request that planning. Um, provide specific insights on what might be different um, or what might need to be different in order to uh, get consensus. Thank you. Ms. Boutier. Uh Through your worship, before I send staff uh, down a pigeonhole, um, uh, where it's where it says uh, options that could be used in lieu of a recommendation uh, or other alternatives would be more general uh, wordage that would be preferred. Uh, and uh, for the last one, um, how staff can track and report. And I think that would capture. Okay. Both the tracking and the reporting. Are you acknowledging me, Mayor? Yes, I was. I, I, I just had one little recommendation for the uh, uh, resolution, uh, but I can't see it now. <laughs> Can we put it up again, please? It was just a slight uh, tweaking, just for more clarity. So where it says uh, in the middle paragraph, in lieu of recommendation, or even that a recommendation, I think what we're trying to say there, or whether or not a recommendation should be brought forward. I think that's sort of what we're trying to say there. Is that not correct? We were, through your worship, uh, we were trying to say, or other alternatives, and that would just uh, really allow staff to uh, provide a report. Really, we're just going to bring forward a report. Good. Thank you. And and this conversation is just beginning. It's not the end. When we bring forward these two reports, we, we will get a chance. Um, so in the second one, uh, the staff can track and report. And then the how, you know, we will bring forward in those reports. And Mayor, if I just may, may add, uh, if Please. I may, 
Uh, just, uh, I'd be more than happy to send to the CAO a tracking document related to the OLT so that uh, you have that historical information. It's it, it sort of a, applies to the concept of, um, um, you know, sort of a broader review um, and uh, uh, lessons learned, that kind of thing. So let's try and learn from what's been going on in the past, and I'm happy to share that. Thank you. And what I, what I think is good about this is we're asking staff to consider the um, the options, but I also think what's very important is we're asking staff to consider how we can better align the values of council, which we believe reflect the values of our residents, with the the rules and bylaws that the professionals are um, asked to implement. All right. All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you very much. Now, we basically are uh, have the opportunity to close the Planning Council. And Ms. Way, for I have to adopt a bylaw number, and I'm sure it won't be 27 you have here. Uh, 023, please. 023. So I move by Councillor Rianko, seconded by Councillor Cooper. Be it resolved the Planning Council adopt bylaw 2022-023 to confirm the proceedings of the March 15th, 2022 Council meeting. All those in favor. And that is carried. Um, and now we're going to close this, but don't go anywhere after we close this meeting because I want to discuss how we're going to do the take on the rest of the um, uh, the, the council meeting from yesterday. So I moved by Councillor Cooper, second by Councillor Hazelton. Be it resolved, the Planning Council does now adjourn at 1150 a.m. until April 2nd, sorry, April 12th, 2022 at 9 a.m. or at the call of the chair. All those in favor. And that is carried. <clears throat>